Hi guys, this is Jana from the blog Lucy and Matilda, and today we're going to make pierogies. Actually, pedahe, which is what we called it when I was growing up. So, so what we're going to do is, I've already made the dough, and I'll show you. Whoops. So we're letting it rest for one hour. It's kind of like a moist dough, almost almost sticky, but see, it doesn't stick to my fingers. So I'm letting that rest for an hour and we'll cook them up in an hour. But first, what I've done already is cooked up about two pounds of potatoes and I'm going to mash them. And I've got about, I would say half a pound or a third of a pound of cheddar cheese. Now, basically, I just kind of guessed because my mom's recipe doesn't show how many potatoes to cook and how much cheese to use. Basically, you use your own taste and your own preference. Now, I thought a couple pounds for two reasons. That was what was left in my bag in the pantry. And also, um, the dough is not it's not, it's only a single recipe of dough, so it won't actually use a lot of mashed potatoes. So I'm gonna grate the cheese, and I'm using sharp cheddar, because that gives you the most flavor. Pierogies are an Eastern European dumpling, and they are delicious. My mom's side of the family is mostly Ukrainian, so this is what we would have often, especially for special occasions, we would have pedaha, which is the Ukrainian name for pierogies. It's actually probably not the most proper name for it. I can't pronounce the most proper name, but that's what we grew up calling it. So basically what you do is you make a dough you cut it in circles, fill it with um, mashed potatoes that have cheese and salt and pepper, or some people put onions inside, or you can make them with sauerkraut, like potatoes and sauerkraut, or just plain old sauerkraut inside, <clears throat> or prunes, or mashed potatoes with bacon and onion. There's all different, um, yeah, my daughter's nodding like bacon right on. <laughs> okay, so this is a couple cups of cheddar cheese. I'll set that aside and I'll mash the potatoes. I hate mashing potatoes, but it's a necessary evil. I usually get my husband Isaac to do the mashing. And then I'll mix in all that delicious cheese, about a teaspoon of salt, and maybe half a teaspoon of pepper. So they're mashed. I'll throw this in the sink. And grab a spoon out. I will eyeball about a teaspoon of salt or maybe three quarters of a teaspoon because the cheese is kind of salty. And I'll grind maybe half a teaspoon of pepper. Now, if you like a lot of pepper in your mashed potatoes, just give her. But if you're not, if you just like a little bit of pepper, go ahead and only put a quarter teaspoon. There, that's about a half a teaspoon. And I'll dump in my shredded cheese, which I have put on wax paper, and you'll see how well that comes off. And I'll throw that aside and just kind of mix this in together. The potatoes are still quite warm, so it should mix together well. Now, so basically what you do 
I'll just give you the recipe for the dough. It is, I used three and one third cups of flour. Mom's recipe calls for three, but you know how everybody's, depends on the brand of flour you use and all kinds of the humidity in the air, all kinds of variations can change the recipe just slightly. One cup of warm water, two tablespoons of, um, I used like an olive canola oil mix, a teaspoon of salt, and one egg. And I put it in the mixer <clears throat> and I used the, the batter hook or the batter implement for the first little while. And then when the dough came together, I changed it to the dough hook and I let it go until all the flour and all the bits of dough were coming off of the sides of the bowl. So it was a nice soft dough. If, if it's too dry, you won't be able to roll out your dough very well. And of course, if it's too wet, it'll be sticky and it'll stick to everything. Okay, there's my potatoes and we will wait for I think about another 45 minutes. You have to let the dough rest for one hour. So we'll just wait and then we'll put our pet head together. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay, we're back and my dough has rested. So I think what I'm gonna do is probably at least cut it in half. Yeah, and start rolling it out. Now you can use, I'm using like a kind of a round, well it is round. It's a, what do you call it? Cookie cutter. But you can use the top of a glass or whatever you can find, you know, a canyon ring or whatever. So anyway, I will kind of flatten this out a little bit. And this is my trusty rolling pin that my dad made me. And we'll roll out the dough. And hopefully it doesn't stick. I might have to flour this a little bit. Just hang on. Okay, so we'll just sprinkle it very lightly. Because I think the more flour that you have in your dough, the more tough the pierogi dough will be. So we want it to be very tender. So I'll just roll it out to about, about an eighth of an inch. Like it's probably is going to be about as thin as you can get it. And usually when I'm rolling dough, I start in the middle and I roll out. It is pretty stretchy. Oops. Okay. That's about an eighth of an inch. I will cut my round. And what we're gonna do is take about about a tablespoon of your potato and cheese mixture and put it in the center and pinch it closed. I think some people use a little bit of water or an egg, but we will just pinch it closed because the top part of my dough is not floured, so it's pretty sticky and just set it aside and what I'll do is I'll just, I'll just make enough to use up this amount of dough and then we will put it in our boiling water, which is behind me. It's starting to boil. Yeah, I made probably way too much potatoes, but somebody will eat them later. So you just put your tablespoon of potato mixture into the center of the circle Fold it in half and pinch the edge tight. Do it a little bit more than just once. 
And these are gonna be pretty big petaha too. My mums are smaller and more dainty and mine are, whoops, mine are big. And if you want, you can stretch it out a little bit before you put the potato mixture in. A little bit more. So stick it in the middle, fold it in half, and pinch. So you're, you're kind of squishing the dough together. So we will make few more of these, maybe two more. And it does help to kind of stretch your circle out a little bit. And these are gonna be for the kids' lunch. Now I don't have any sour cream on hand today, but how we like to eat them is basically what, what we're going to do is put them in boiling water. So I think I'm gonna have enough enough dough here for six pierogies or petaha. You put them in boiling water and they will rise, they will float to the top when they're done. And then my mom always puts them directly into cold water to stop the cooking. And that makes it so that they're not overcooked and the dough doesn't get mushy and they all stick together. So they're Basically, they'll be floating in cold, cold water. And then after you're done cooking them all in the boiling water, batch after batch, so you can easily double, triple, quadruple this recipe, which I gave to you in the beginning, and I will leave a link to my blog post in the notes. And you can go there and get the recipe for the dough and for the potato mixture. And what was I saying? So we'll make, we'll make um, six of them right now. And I'll show you how it's done. So I've got six petaha. We're gonna put them in the boiling water, wait till they float to the top, scoop them out, put them into the cold water. And then after they're all cooked, then basically I'm going to heat up some butter and onions in a frying pan and plenty of butter so they don't stick. And especially because I'm gonna be using cast iron, I'm gonna need extra butter. So you're gonna fry your onions and brown them first in the butter and then you, then you uh, put the pet hat into the frying pan and fry them on both sides. And that's the way we eat them. And it's usually with sour cream. But when I was growing up, I ate Petaha with ketchup also, actually more frequently than sour cream. But my kids won't eat them with ketchup, it's just sour cream and neither will my husband. So let's go to the stove and I'll show you how they look when they're boiled and when they're done. Okay. Just use this to get them off the bottom a little bit, very gently. Okay, and they will rise to the top when they're done. Okay, so they're flowing to the top and the water's come back to a boil, which I think is important. And I'll just take them out. These are humongous petaha. They need to be a bit smaller than this, but they're still delicious. And then I've got some onions sauteing over here on my left. And what we'll do is just bring the cold, the cold petaha over here and, whoops. I will scoop them out and put them in with the frying onions. Make sure you drain it properly though.
Okay, so there you have it. We made pierogies. And basically, it doesn't take that long, but usually if you have, a, you know, a couple, two, three hours in an afternoon, you can make a batch of peta and get it ready for supper. No, we're gonna have just a late lunch of Petaha today. Thanks for watching and hit the like button and the subscribe button if you wanna see more videos like this. Okay, bye-bye.